The empirical cycle captures the process of coming up with hypotheses about how stuff works and testing these hypotheses against empirical data in a systematic and rigorous way. It characterizes the hypothetical deductive approach to science. Being familiar with the five different phases of this cycle will really help you to keep the big picture in mind, especially when we get into specifics of things like experimental design and sampling. So we'll start with the observation phase, obviously. This is where the magic happens. It's where an observation, again, obviously, sparks the idea for a new research hypothesis. We might observe an intriguing pattern, uh, an unexpected event, anything that we find interesting and that we want to explain. How we make the observation really doesn't matter. It can be a personal observation, an experience that somebody else shares with us, even an imaginary observation that takes place entirely in your head. Of course, observations generally come from previous research findings, which are systematically obtained. But in principle, anything goes. OK, so let's take as an example a personal observation of mine. I have a horrible mother-in-law. I've talked to some friends, and they also complain about their mother-in-law. So this looks like an interesting pattern to me a pattern between type of person and likability. Okay, so the observation phase is about observing a relation in one or more specific instances. In the induction phase, this relation, observed in specific instances, is turned into a general rule. That's what induction means, taking a statement that's true in specific cases and inferring that the statement is true in all cases, always. For example, from the observation that my friends and I have horrible mothers-in-law, I can induce the general rule that all mothers-in-law are horrible. Of course, this rule, or hypothesis, is not necessarily true. It could be wrong. That's what the rest of the cycle is about, testing our hypothesis. In the induction phase, inductive reasoning is used to transform specific observations into a general rule or hypothesis. In the deduction phase, we deduce that the relations specified in the general rule should also hold in new, specific instances. From our hypothesis, we deduce an explicit expectation or prediction about new observations. For example, if all mothers-in-law are indeed horrible, then if I ask 10 of my colleagues to rate their mother-in-law as either likable, neutral, or horrible, then they should all choose the category horrible. Now, in order to make such a prediction, we need to determine the research setup. We need to decide on a definition of the relevant concepts, measurement instruments, procedures, the sample that we'll collect new data from, etc., etc. So in the deduction phase, the hypothesis is transformed by deductive reasoning and specification of the research setup into a prediction about new empirical observations. In the testing phase, the hypothesis is actually tested by collecting new data and comparing them to the prediction. Now, this almost always requires statistical processing, using descriptive statistics to summarize the observations for us, and inferential statistics to help us decide if the prediction was correct. In our simple example, we don't need statistics. Let's say that 8 out of 10 colleagues rate their mother-in-law as horrible, but 2 rate her as neutral. Now, we can see right away our prediction didn't come true. It was refuted. All 10 mothers-in-law should have been rated as horrible. So in the testing phase, new empirical data is collected, and with the aid of statistics, the prediction is confirmed or disconfirmed. In the evaluation phase, we interpret the results in terms of our hypothesis. If the prediction was confirmed, this only provides provisional support for a hypothesis. It doesn't mean that we've definitively proven the hypothesis. Because it's always possible that in the future we will find somebody who just loves their mother-in-law. In our example, the prediction was actually refuted. This doesn't mean we should reject our hypothesis outright. In many cases, there are plausible explanations for our failure to confirm. If these explanations have to do with the research setup, the hypothesis is preserved and investigated again, but with a better research design. In other cases, the hypothesis is adjusted based on the results. The hypothesis is rejected and discarded only in very rare cases. In the evaluation phase, the results are interpreted in terms of the hypothesis, which is provisionally supported, adjusted, or rejected. 
The observations collected in the testing phase can serve as new specific observations in the observation phase. This is why the process is described as a cycle. New empirical data obtained in the testing phase give rise to new insights that lead to a new run-through. And that's what empirical science comes down to. We try to hone in on the best hypotheses and build our understanding of the world as we go through the cycle again and again.